Hi there! I'm here today with Sinatra, my baby blue-eyed leucistic ball python, because I want to talk to you about something that is really quite tragic, which is that sometimes people get a, a pet reptile and then they decide that reptile isn't right for them, or or that they just don't they don't want it anymore, they lose interest, or who knows what, there's a whole lot of things that can happen. I want to start off by telling you this is a terrible thing and I don't want to see this happen to you. That's actually why we have this channel. But most often the reason that somebody will decide that they don't want to keep their reptile anymore is because right from the beginning they picked the wrong one. And so as you know our whole channel is about helping you find the reptile that is best suited to your specific abilities, uh, your, your interests, and your ability to care for. But sometimes sometimes it doesn't happen and and you know I, I listen in I, I talk to a lot of people actually a, a large percentage of the reptiles that I keep are rescues from people who decided gosh I can't keep this anymore I can't deal with it it's too hard and you know a lot of this has to do with the fact that there can be a big difference between the reptile that you want and the reptile that you actually want to keep the one that you're willing to care for, for its entire life. Uh, there can also be a very big difference between keeping a baby reptile and keeping an adult. And so one thing I want you to always keep in mind when you're trying to pick the right reptile for you isn't, is this baby reptile right for me? I want you to think, is it going to be right for me as an adult? For example, this is a ball python. And ball pythons are cute and little, and they grow up to be fairly reasonable sized snakes. Not huge, um, nobody's really probably going to run into a problem of a ball python getting too big, but if you're walking around, say at a reptile expo or a pet store, or even just browsing around online, you might see other pythons that look basically identical to this snake that come in beautiful colors and they're roughly this size and you might think, hey, you know, I like that snake. It doesn't cost more. It's the same size. I love them. And as it turns out, when they grow up, they could be close to 20 feet long and a completely unreasonable animal for most people to keep. And this happens to people a lot. So don't plan on what the animal is going to be like as a baby, kind of what it's going to be like as an adult. Other examples are things like monitor lizards. Sometimes people see cute little baby savanna monitors and they think, oh, I'm going to put that in a 10 gallon aquarium. And they don't realize that in the future, that thing is going to need a tremendous amount of space and a tremendous amount of food. Something I encountered just recently, I was at a pet store and I was listening to people walk by tortoises. And tortoises are cute. And what they had there were two different species of tortoises. They had Russian tortoises and they had sulcata tortoises. And they were just looking by and going, oh, that's so cute. And we could feed it, they were saying this, our extra salad, which I don't know what their salad is like, but that's probably not an ideal diet, especially for both of those tortoises. And they had no idea what they needed. So that was one real problem. And I don't think they had a clue what the difference was between those two tortoises. They're just saying, hey, we should get a tortoise. And looking at those two tortoises, adult Russian tortoises and baby sulcata tortoises, they look almost identical. The only difference is that the sulcata tortoise is a little bit smaller, but both of them are very, very reasonably sized, maybe about the size of a softball or smaller. But there's a serious difference in that those Russian tortoises were adults and they will stay pretty much that size forever, like a permanent tortoise puppy. But the sulcata is a little bit different. Because within a few years, that little baby tortoise is gonna look like this. This is my sulcata tortoise. I didn't want a sulcata tortoise, but they are amazing. And somebody asked me, can you please take this tortoise? I don't have a place for it. And, and the reason that that person had it is because somebody else had dumped it off with him. And the reason that the person who dumped it off with him had it is because somebody else had dumped it off with him. There is a phone number written on the bottom of this tortoise. It's not my phone number. It's not the person that I got it from's phone number. It's not the person that he got it from's phone number. It's somebody who's had this animal a long, long time ago. And this animal got a lot bigger than they were expecting. And it keeps getting passed along and passed along and passed along. And the thing is, 
He's not even halfway grown. He's going to get more than twice this big. This is the third largest tortoise species in the world. And a lot of people buy these when they're the size of a baseball and they have no idea what they're getting themselves into. And when I agreed that I was going to take this animal on, what I was agreeing to was building an enormous enclosure in my basement and having a lot of space outside during the summer and a lot of food. And knowing that this animal doesn't eat salad, for the most part, it's a grass eater because they come from the deserts of Northern Africa. This is very different than a Russian tortoise. But a lot of people, when they buy a pet, have no idea what they're getting. And do not let this happen to you. Keeping a reptile is a commitment. And uh, in the case of a tortoise, I mean, it might be a lifetime commitment because they live a very, very long time. This is not something to get as an impulse buy. I don't like the idea of getting animals for people as presents. Uh, unless, of course, you know that person has been researching and preparing and would be getting that animal anyway. Uh, because this isn't something you should get unprepared. Make sure you know what you're getting yourself into before you get into it. Because later on it's going to be the animal that's going to suffer if you didn't. But the truth is, sometimes life throws you a curveball. Right? Sometimes you got the animal that was absolutely right for you in your situation and unexpectedly things changed and you just can't possibly keep that animal anymore. I want to talk to you about what to do then when you really do have to rehome a reptile. There are some good options and some terrible options and people do all of these things. So I want to talk to you first about the terrible options. One terrible option if you find that you can't take care of an animal anymore is to neglect it. You keep it, but you basically stop taking care of it because you don't have time or energy or money to do it anymore. Don't do this. That is not fair to the animal. Another thing people seriously do, and I hate to even have to mention this, is they kill them. Um, I don't think I need to explain why that's not a great idea. The last thing, and arguably this is the worst thing you could do, is release that animal into the wild. Um, there are only two things that are going to happen. Generally speaking, if you release an animal into the wild in a habitat it's not used to, maybe at a time of year it's not prepared for, it's going to die. So you're, you are just making the decision to kill that animal, you just didn't want to have to watch it happen. And that's a terrible choice. There's something though that could be even worse when you release that animal than having it die. And that is that it might live. Because you are taking an animal that is not native to this area and you are releasing it into the wild there. And if it lives, it becomes what is called an invasive species. You've got a type of animal that's not native there. The, the other organisms in that area are not used to it. And now, it might thrive and conquer all of the native animals in that area. It also might bring in diseases and all kinds of other problems. For example, cats are one of the worst animals to have get loose anywhere. In New Zealand, there was an entire species of bird driven to extinction by one lighthouse keeper's cat. It may have had a few kitty friends that helped it out. But as far as we know, it might have been just that one cat drove an entire species of birds all the way to extinction. So having an animal that was your pet live in the wild is maybe even worse than having it die in the wild. And we're actually seeing a lot of problems with this in the southeastern United States right now. Um, Australia historically has terrible experience with people releasing animals that didn't belong there and having them just be devastating to the wild fun of the area. Let's talk now, instead of about the terrible options, let's talk about the good options, okay? So one really good option is to find a new home for your animal. Some places that, that are really good to look would be uh, local herpetological reptile groups on Facebook and other social media that are local to your area. You can just say, hey, I need somebody who would be willing to take care of this sulcata tortoise. My, my life has changed. People will be understanding. There are people who 
would provide a wonderful home for an animal that you just simply can't take care of anymore. In addition to social media, there are things like Craigslist or other online classifieds where you could put out an ad that says, I, I need somebody to take this. One thing I do want to mention though is when you go with an approach like this, where you're, you're trying to find a, maybe a perfect stranger to take them in, make sure that they are making a good choice when they take on your animal, that they're ready for it, that they know what they're getting themselves into, because otherwise we might just be passing things down the line one generation, and who knows if those people will make one of the terrible choices that we mentioned before. So when you find a new home, make sure they, they're ready for it. There are also reptile rescues out there. These are, these are usually people or organizations that know that a lot of people make bad choices when it comes to getting pet reptiles and they don't want to see them suffer and they don't want to see them released into the wild and so they give a lot of their time, energy, and resources to take in these animals and hopefully they're able to find quality homes for them so that they can be returned to a loving, caring home in the future. The last thing is that you might ask around to other people, friends of yours who are interested in, in reptiles, who would be willing to provide a temporary home while you get your feet back under you. Sometimes your situation changes, but only temporarily, and you can't take care of an animal for a little bit, that wouldn't be fair to it, but that doesn't mean you won't ever be able to take care of it again. And just ask around, that is a very good option, and it's actually wonderful because you might get to keep your animal. Truth is though, sometimes the people watching over it get so attached to it that you'd feel bad taking it back. But if they don't, you might even get your reptile back and at least you'll know where it is and that it's being well taken care of and that's a beautiful thing. If it is possible, never get yourself into this situation. But if you do, I really hope that you make a responsible choice. Yo it to the animals, yo it to yourself so you don't beat yourself up about this for the rest of your life. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you have other suggestions, as to great ways that people could deal with this situation or avoid getting into it in the first place. We'd love to hear about it. And as always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Did good, big dad. I just want to kiss his face. <laughs>